what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel let's solve this math question which says find the values of x for which x times the square root of x plus the square root of x is equal to 10. well we're going to be using substitution to solve this question we can say let the square root of x be equal to y so that means wherever i see the square root of x i'm going to be substituting y now i need to remove this square root and in order to do that i'll take the square of both sides so this is the square root of x i'll take the square of the left hand side this is equal to y i'll also take the square of the right hand side now notice that the square cancels out the square root leaving behind x to be equal to y squared very good so that means wherever i see x i'll be putting y squared now let's go back to the given expression so this is x and x is y squared so i'm going to be putting y squared times the square root of x the square root of x is y so that is times y plus the square root of x that's y and this is equal to 10. very good now y squared times y gives y cube plus y this is equal to 10. now our next step will be for us to split 10 such that one of the terms will be a perfect cube so this is y cube plus y equal to 10 is same as 8 plus 2. now notice that 8 is a perfect cube now our next step will be for us to move 8 and 2 to the left hand side that means i'm going to be subtracting 8 and 2 from both sides so i'll subtract 8 i'll also subtract 2 from both sides subtract 8 and 2 from both sides now this becomes y cube so y cube minus 8 minus 8 and then plus y plus y minus 2 minus 2 this is equal to 8 minus 8 cancels out and 2 minus 2 cancels out so leaving behind 0 on the right hand side all right so this becomes y cube minus it is a perfect cube which means it can be written as two cube now i'm going to be putting this inside of a bracket so this is plus now i'll open a bracket and put y minus two very good and this is equal to zero now notice that this is difference of two cubes and difference of two cubes has this property for example when i have a cube minus b cube this is equal to a minus b a minus b times a squared plus a b and then plus b squared so we're going to be writing this in this form so this becomes y minus 2 times y squared plus y times 2 plus 2 squared very good so this is for the difference of two cubes plus now here i have y minus 2 equal to 0 
Now let's simplify what we have inside of this parenthesis. So this becomes y minus 2 times y squared plus y times 2 is 2y plus 2 squared is 4 and then plus y minus 2 equal to 0. Very good. And now notice that y minus 2 is common. So our next step will be for us to factor out y minus 2. So let's factor out y minus 2. Very good. Now open a bracket. So y minus 2 times y squared plus 2y plus 4 divided by y minus 2. I'm going to have this, which is y minus y squared plus 2y plus 4. Very good. And then plus y minus 2 divided by y minus 2. I have 1. And this is equal to 0. And now simplifying what we have inside of this parenthesis, we have y minus 2 times this becomes y squared plus 2y and then 4 plus 5 4 plus 1 is 5 very good and this is equal to 0 so we have two cases we have the first case to be y minus 2 to be equal to 0 and then the second case to be y squared plus 2y plus 5 to be equal to 0. And now let's solve these cases one after the other. So for the first case, we say case 1. This is y minus 2 equal to 0. Now to get the value of y, we have to add 2 to both sides. So adding 2 to both sides gives y. And then minus 2 plus 2 cancels out, equal to 0 plus 2 is 2. So we've got y to be equal to 2 from the first case. Now let's go ahead to solve for the second case. The second case is where we have y squared plus 2y plus 5 to be equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation. And we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this. And so our uh, a from this quadratic equation is the coefficient of y squared, and that's 1. Our uh, b is the coefficient of y, and that's 2. And our uh, c is the constant term, which is 5. So using the quadratic formula, we're looking for y, so y will be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now let's substitute into our quadratic formula. So this becomes y equal to negative b. b is 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 2 squared, minus 4 times a, a is 1, and then times c, c is 5. All over 2 times a, that means 2 times 1. So this simplifies into y equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 1 times 5 is 20 all over 2 times 1 is 2. So this becomes y equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 20 is negative 16 all over 2. 
And if we have to break this down, this becomes y equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 is same as 16 times negative 1 all over 2. And let's separate this. So this becomes y equal to negative 2 plus or minus. So separating the radical, we have the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1 all over 2. And we all know that the square root of 16 is 4. And also, the square root of negative 1 is iota. So this becomes y equal to negative 2 plus or minus. So this is 4 times i, which is 4i, all over the denominator, which is 2. So we can't just stop here. We're going to factorize since 2 is common on the numerator. And so factor out 2, we have y to be equal to 2 out, open bracket, negative 2 divided by 2, I have negative 1, plus or minus, 4i divided by 2 is 2i. Very good. All over 2. Now notice that 2 here can cancel out this 2, leaving behind y to be equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2i. Very good. But recall, recall from our substitution, so let's recall that. From our substitution, we said let the square root of x be y. And when removing the square root, we got x to be equal to y squared. So let's use this to get the value for x. So for the first case, we said when y is equal to 2, because that's the value we got for y from our first case. Now, let's put it here. So this is x. We then become y squared. That's 2 squared, which results to 4. So this is a real solution for x. Now, let's get other solutions for x, which are going to be complex solutions because the value of y is complex. So let's go and say when y is equal to negative 1, plus or minus 2i. So we're going to put that here. This makes x to be y squared, which is negative 1, plus or minus 2i, and then squared. Now, we're going to expand this. This expansion is of the form a plus b all squared, which is expanded as a squared plus 2ab and then plus b squared. So we're going to be expanding this in this form. So this becomes x equal to, so I have negative 1 squared following this pattern, plus, okay, this is going to be plus or minus, plus or minus 2 times negative 1 times 2i and then plus 2i squared. Very good. Very good. And then simplifying further, we have x to be equal to negative 1 squared is 1. And then watch what we have here. This is 2 times negative 1 times 2i. This gives negative 4i. And it's going to affect this plus and this minus. So when negative multiplies plus, we're going to have negative. And when it multiplies negative, I'm going to have positive. So the signs invert. So this is 4i. Very good. And then plus, this square affects the 2. It also affects the i. 
So 2 squared, that's 4. And this becomes i squared. So times i squared. Very good. And we know that i squared is equal to negative 1, right? Very good. So I'm going to be putting negative 1 in place of i squared. So making x to be, this is 1 minus plus 4i and then plus 4 times i squared is negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 is actually negative 4. So this results to 1 minus plus 4i and then negative 4. And if we have to subtract, this is 1 minus 4, which results to minus 3, and then minus plus 4i. So there are actually two values for x here. So one of such values is negative 3 minus 4i. That's taking the negative. And now this time, taking the positive, we have negative 3 and then plus 4i. Very good. So there are three values or three solutions for x for which one is a real solution and the other two are complex solutions. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.